So it's funny, after just making a video about trying to revive a battery out of one of my other UPSs, this one decided that it was done. Um, so this is going to be the first of a two-part video series. Is two parts a series? Two parts, anyway. Uh, the thing about the, uh, this is an APC, I can't remember what the, 425. Um, and the earlier one that I looked at has, uh, that I've had the battery from anyway, the battery is designed to be user replaceable. This one is not, but that doesn't mean it's not user replaceable to anyone with a screwdriver and a bit of sense. So uh, in this part, I'm going to take out the battery so that I can find a replacement. And then in the second part, I will have ordered it and, uh, and we'll put the new battery in here and see if we can get it working. Um, these things, annoyingly, when the battery fails, go into an alarm mode that, uh, let's see if I can force it into, it's not plugged in, so no, it won't. But um, the, uh, the, the alarm mode is really annoying. It flashes the light, and you can't shut off the alarm mode and just use it as a, uh, as a power bar, so you've got to take it out. The, uh, the ones with the user removable battery, you can actually unplug the battery, and that will clear the alarm because it marks as no battery available, but these ones don't, even if you uh, disconnect the battery. So there's the full information, and that's what we're going to do first. So I'll just get a big screwdriver. This is the battery disconnect. You can see where I tried pulling at it with pliers before I realized that's the battery disconnect. And when you, when you it's the same style as a large automotive fuse, I think, which makes sense. Might even have a fuse in it. Doesn't look like it though. That looks to be solid metal. Um, now, a couple of things about opening this up. Because it's got a battery in it, you've got to make sure this is pulled out. And the reason you've got to make sure this is pulled out is if there's any charge in the battery, this is going to have 120 volts for a North American model in it. So you need to disconnect the battery. And even still, there are some fairly large capacitors in these things that we want to be a little bit careful of. But apart from that, these are not terribly complex things, and these are not very good quality. These are about the least expensive thing you can get. I use this one for my upstairs router to try to, or an old router that's repurposed as a, as a uh, wireless access point um, that I use upstairs just to keep it going for a couple of hours. The idea was if I was um, running a meeting or something, this is especially an issue during the remote era, if I was running a meeting, then I wanted to, I think that's out, then I wanted to be able to, uh, to not have everything fail immediately. So there's one on the computer, and there's one on all the network stuff coming up. Let's see if we got all the screws out. No. Okay, so we got three. This one's not quite out. And again, we want to make sure this stays unplugged. There we go. Okay, so we should be able to lift the top off like this. And I will, well, first of all, just make it clear, this battery is extremely serviceable. It's right here. They don't even bother putting a label over it, so we know exactly what this is, so this is no trouble to order. These are about $40 delivered, I think, if it's what I think it is. Um, we'll do the automotive style and unplug. It's on there. Unplug the positive first. Really stiff. There we go. All right, so there we go. Um, there's the battery. 12 volt, 4.5 amp hour, 20 hours, and we've got the size. This probably specifies everything that we need to find the replacement. So I can 
order one of those or get it from any industrial supply shop if you have one convenient. Um, we have another look at this. So the battery is held in place. There are two little foam pads it rests on here so it doesn't bang around. Um, this little thing on the bottom here is switching. This comes off the board but it looks like it's switching the negative so the positive stays. Well, hard to tell, right? Mm, I think it's the positive. Um, the outlets, I'm sorry, I don't have my usual light because the battery went out in it, so we're making do with what we've got. And these are the outlets here. Um, I don't really claim to understand much about these power supplies, but presumably it's going to have a 12 volt um, rail or 13.8 volt rail which keeps the battery charged and then it switches over using presumably these relays here some big capacitors mobs um, and some switching opponents no heat sinking or anything on this so this is very lightly rated, right? But it's only going to draw, I don't know, 20 watts maybe driving a couple of things that it, would, that it would drive out here. So that's it. Not very exciting. Oh, what is interesting is we have a lot of chokes on various cables in here. Um, might make a, make, Getting the cores out of those and those chokes might be useful for projects of various sorts, um, especially for people in playing with hi fi who like to put chokes on all sorts of things. Um, so that might make it worth picking up one of these if you see it in the trash just to get the iron cores out of those. Anyway, we'll put the lid on that. I'll put the screws back in loosely. We'll order up this battery. And then we'll come back in part two and, uh, and put, it, put the new one in. Oh, I guess before we go anywhere, we should at least put a meter on this and see what it says. Digging around my drawers here, well, we'll just get out the little unity meter for this purpose. I find I use this little thing more than just about anything else was my first digital meter. Well, you can watch me get all the cables tangled up. One of the, my complaints about this thing is that you can't leave the cables plugged in in its little cheapy case, which is otherwise just fine, but Keep the reflection off a little bit. All right, so DC, I would bet this is 10 and a half volts like the other one. Well, I got 11 volts. It's a little healthier than the other one was. Well, maybe I'll play it trying to charge this one and revive it, but I don't think there's going to be much to do with that after the previous experience. All right, so that thus endeth part one and we will order one of these batteries and see if we can get this thing back up and running in part two. Thanks for watching.